So with the main blueprint logic out of the way for our weapon actor, what we need to do now is we need to get the last few uh, blueprinting done for our character blueprint. Set, set a couple more lines of logic up in the player blueprint, which is going to control our line tracing ability from our camera to our character player from his muzzle area. And then we need to also be able to, I guess, shoot some kind of explosive whenever it hits the ground. I mean, what a good way to be able to send it off after all that work, right? So from there, let's jump out of our Weapon Master Blueprint and let's jump into our third person character. So what we're going to do in here is we need to, we've already been set established for get the default weapons. Um, if you set switch to has authority, if the remote was disconnected, please just connect that into for each loop and that way both the client and the server can call this functionality. Now with this return node, we need to do two things. We need to, after once we spawn the actor, we need to set the owning pawn. And then we also need to attach this to the owner holster. So these are both blue, these are both functions that are being called from the weapon blueprint. That's why we were able to pull them out from the return actor from here. So the owning pawn is going to become this blueprint here. So we'll get a self. Let's attach the completed loop into the attached owner holster. I'm going to double click on this wire for organizational reasons and bring that down. Okay, so our spawning our actor should now be set up. Now we need to call this getting the default weapons one more time within the event begin play. So if we go to our event graph, I think I got rid of it. I did not. Okay, let's get rid of it for now. So within our event graph, I'm going to put this up near my event ticks because it's an important, it's a pretty high priority node that I like to keep track of. So with event begin play, what we want to do is we want to give the default weapons to our, to our pawn actor. So when we're playing, our pawn should start and we're looking at the server side over here. Let me bring this window over and if I bring over my clients, you'll see that our client now has a weapon as well. So remember, these are not skeletal meshes. These are actually weapon actors that will carry their own logic with them as we begin, as we continue to blueprint them as we go along. So great. We, our characters are now holding their weapons again. Uh, so from that, the next thing we really want to do is we want to make sure that we're able to fire these weapons. Um, so we can keep track down here if we know that we're able to get through here and our start fire if we double click on our function we can see that back in the weapon blueprint graph that it brought us back to that we should see a print string that will appear every time we fire this weapon it should say should be firing weapon it should appear in red and if this works we should be able to click and see these weapons firing cool so our client fired only once hmm so our server side, one more time. Okay, so we know what the problem is here, is this logic is somewhat, this logic is only doing a do once right now. So every time this becomes false, and this is reading as false, it's gonna come up and needs to set it to true. Well, if it's only going through here once, but we're not able to shoot again, that means somehow this is becoming true because it's not doing anything. So let's check out what's happening on stop fire. Well, there's the problem right there, is because this is setting it back to false, but this is already reading it as false, so it's not going to do anything. So we got to set that to become false. So now if we're going back and we go to play, we can fire all day long in the client side and the server side can see it too. Great. So now that we fix that error, let's save that. And now let's begin the process of allowing our player to start shooting some kind of line trace or debugging lines so we can see that they're actually doing something in the world. Uh, so with in the logic that's going to be doing this is actually going to be driving the logic that's going to drive the firing is we have our player that's going to shoot the gun the gun is going to or the weapon actor excuse me is going to shoot the logic so let's delve back into our start fire again and do, 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 we have this function here that actually has no logic in it so I know that this works, we can get rid of our print string debug. And if we go into our camera aim, there's nothing going on in here. 
Well, we need to assemble some code in here to actually tell the logic that we need to fire off a print, fire off some kind of debug line. So, with that being said, let's grab up my reference here. Okay. Oh, well, I'm not going to find it on that one. That was the third person one. Give me one more second here and we'll be on our way. Okay, so set this up is we're going to need a, a new variable that's actually going to be our position in the world. So let's add a new variable and let's call it, and this is going to be a vector. So it's going to be have an x, y, z position in the world that the entrace is going to be at. So we'll call this one our aim vector. And I want to set this when we enter this function here. Now we need something that's going to set this aim vector up. Well, one of the things we can do to actually have a starter point or some kind of starter numerical value is we can get our owning pawn and we can find out what's the base aim rotation of that pawn. And we can find out what's the forward vector of that pawn as well. So it's going to be finding out for us which direction is our character player facing in. That's all it really is going to do. So next we need to actually delve into being able to set up the debug tracing. So from this we can drag this out and we'll go line trace by channel. And from this line trace by channel, we're going to need a starting point in which the line is going to begin and an end point in which it's going to hit something or continue on and stop. Uh, so what I'm going to do for debug type is I'm going to put this on for duration so we can see it in the world if we go to uh, shoot it. Um, from whatever this line trace hits, we need to find out what it's hitting. So if the return value, I'm sorry, if we can get an out value and we can do a break, to show all the results that it's hitting something. And from that, we're going to be finding out what our location is and we're going to compare it with another value, which is probably going to be coming from our muzzle position. Or it will actually come, I'm sorry, these two positions are going to be coming from our camera and from our endpoint, but the line trace is actually going to start within our muzzle flash, muzzle flash socket on our weapon. Um, so I'm going to drag this out. Let's bring in our aim vector now because at this point something's got to influence this if it gets this far down the logic line uh, and then we need a return node which I don't believe we have nope so let's see bring a new one in and see if we can get rid of that oh, yeah we can Okay, so sometimes in macros and collapse graphs, like it might get rid of this. Uh, so for now, we'll need something to compare it to two values. If we have a blocking hit, we'll need one value in which the projectile is going to spawn against something. But if it just like say we shoot outside in the sky and it's going to go on forever, we have to end that at some point. We don't want the projectile to just fly on and on and on. Because in a multiplayer match, you could have like 10,000 bullet meshes flying through the air, which you don't want floating around. Um, so for this, we'll do a select vector, and depending on what it hits, it's going to say if we hit something, we're going to choose the A value of whatever we hit from the, this location, and if we don't hit something, we need something to drive what are we looking at and what are we going to shoot in that direction. So we're going to end up setting a couple more variables up uh, through the uh, player controller side of things. So from the, how we'll do this is we will we'll need to um, end up making a muzzle flash position as well to also begin this line trace. So we're going to need a pure function. So let's write our pure function out really quick within our weapons blueprint. And let's add a new function. And let's call this the git muzzle location. I'm going to make this a pure function. And from this we need two things. We are going to need the weapon mesh. 
and we're also going to need the muzzle socket that comes with it. So that's going to be a name. Whoops, or rename that. Type happy there. All right, let's change this from a vector to a name. I'm going to bring that in and get that. And we're going to be getting sockets location. Socket name will go into this. And our return node is going to be a vector that's going to be our muzzle location. Uh, I'm going to respell that right now. Okay. And that will be driven by where our socket location is. So our muzzle socket, well, let's compile and save this really quickly. In our muzzle socket, we want to find out what exactly is the socket we want from our weapon mesh. Well, we don't have a mesh in here, but we can actually go into any of the static meshes that I have in my prototype weapons pack here or any of the sockets in which you assign to your guns, your gun meshes. I'm going to go to my skeleton and there's a muzzle flash socket in here that I can use. I'm going to copy that socket name. And for this muzzle socket, I'm just going to fill that in. Let me select this variable. File save. And now it should find a location to that. So when we jump back into the uh, camera side, we now have a position in which to set this variable. Now there's a lot of stuff in here. I'm just going to actually right click on this and close their tabs because I'm only working on not set pawn, owning pawn. I'm actually working on just the camera. So now we actually have a start position. So what we can do is get muzzle location and we can plug that into our start. So that's the pure function we just got done creating. We're going to need that one more time at the bottom of this entire graph that's going to set up uh, what happens if we don't hit something. Save that. And now let's go back to our main menu of the content browser and we're going to be building a new blueprint so I'm going to make a folder that's actually going to be like a lot of blueprint dependent stuff that's pretty important like game states or player states so a new asset or new folder I call this one blueprints within this blueprint folder I'm going to you, you guessed it I'm gonna make a new blueprint I'm going to make a blueprint class and I want it to be a player controller. So let's call this our custom player. Actually, this hmm, TPS player controller. All right. So now within our player controller, we have a camera actor in here, which we're not really going to be messing with. We're only going to be focused on just getting our just getting our uh, variables that we need established, so we can call those from within the weapon blueprint. So it shouldn't be too many nodes, but from that, let's do this. Let's uh, make a new function. We're going to call this function our viewpoint. And we're going to make one more function called our aim vector. So let's start working on our viewpoint first. All right, what our view? We are going to need a new variable, and it's going to be a vector. It's going to be shared over with our camera in our weapons blueprint. So we'll call this new vector our out view location. We'll turn this into a vector. And let's bring that in here and let's set this to nothing. So it's completely cleared value when it begins. Uh, what we need to do is we're going to also grab get the control. Oop. Get controlled pawn. Hmm, let's just do get pawn see what we end up with. Get controlled pawn. There we go. 
And from this, we're going to find out who is playing what character. Is it another player on the server's character, or is it the server character himself? So from that, we'll cast it, since we're only going to be using one blueprint, to the third-person shooter character that we're building all our logic in. And from this, we need to find the camera that's associated with this blueprint. So we'll get the follow camera. And from this follow camera, we're going to get the camera view. This is actually a pretty crazy little function here. So we'll get camera view. And we're going to need something in this desired view. We can break this. We can like, you know, drag this off, do a break. And we can get location or rotation if we want to. Or we can just right click on this variable here and do a split struct. Um, you can do the same thing too with even variables. So let's say with variables, since it's three like points on anything, if you were to right click on this and do a split struct, it'll actually convert those into floats. So X, Y, Z, instead of it being just a, a one pin influence. It's the same thing with rotation and many others. If you don't want it to be looking like this, you can just recompile and become a one pin again. Very little nifty thing to know. Uh, it's definitely saves on like nodes and having to convert a lot of things over. Um, so with this, um, whatever the camera's view is, is going to end up setting our new out view location. So our desired view location is now going to drive our out view location for this very, for this vector. Um, so from that, we will need to do one more thing at the bottom here that's going to also drive this in case our cast fails for finding who the third person character is. So we'll do another set for our out view location. And we will find the function of get focal location. And this will be our out product of what we're going to have. Plug these in. All right, we got one more to set up and we should be good to go. So let's get our aim vector complete. We'll plug in the rest of our logic for our camera and we'll do a quick little spawn uh, particle and we should be done. So we're running about 17 minutes here. Okay, um, I'm going to stop the video there and then we'll come back and we'll finish this out. So we'll come back in the next video.